help. The Mandela Effect has completely taken over my life. Stick with me and we'll talk about what it is. If you're a regular viewer of my channel, you're probably here for a health story or a how-to video or something about farming. This is going to be completely different than those kind of videos. Now, I'd love it if you want to watch and find out what the Mandela Effect is, but if you're here for those other videos, I'll continue making those kind of videos, but I'm going to launch into a whole different series here because this has completely consumed my life and I need to talk about it. So what is the Mandela Effect? Before I dive into that, let's kind of relate it to something you already know. If you watch any sort of science fiction show like Star Trek, uh, Farscape, Stargate, all of them have an episode like this where one of the main characters wakes up and they're in some sort of illusion or they're in a fake reality or a hologram or they're in their mind and everything goes good for a while but then something's a little different like they pick up a newspaper and a headlines different something like that and it jolts them out of that fake reality so what happens is they get out of the fake reality and they find out like an alien did it or something well this is happening to me and a whole lot of other people right now in this reality and I know it sounds crazy believe me if someone woke up and said hey my reality's changed I'm I don't think I'm in the same reality anymore I would think they need to get their head checked or their mind checked or maybe they're starting to get some dementia or something but the problem here is that thousands to tens of thousands and maybe even hundreds of thousands of people are starting to wake up and remember all these deleted memories how does something like that happen how do tens of thousands of people have the same memory that was not there anymore it's gone and this has become such a thing that they named it the Mandela effect now it started a few years ago but really took uh, a turn in the last few months and it's happening to lots and lots of people it's named the Mandela effect because it's named after Nelson Mandela and what happened was a lot of people including myself remember Mandela dying like in the late 80s or the early 90s so I remember him dying because we sat and talked about it in school it was one of my like history classes or something and you know as a teenager here in America you pretty much don't know anything <laughs> you know so like we had to explain who Mandela was and why he's important that he died and that's kind of it I kind of forgot all about it and what happened was I played rugby for most of my childhood and we're really into rugby so about like I don't know 10 years later I'm way out in the college and we watch a game at a bar it was uh, New Zealand versus South Africa and right before the game started Nelson Mandela comes out in like a Springbox jersey and I remember turning to my friends and was like I thought he was dead and they all looked at me like I was crazy and they're like no nah, no nah, you must be thinking of another leader or something no he's been alive I just figured as you know we were drinking a lot and I, I really wasn't paying attention and that was it I was like oh, well, I guess I guess I remembered that wrong so I never really thought about it and what happened is I found um, a community online that was talking about this and that had the same memory of him dying in jail and it was kind of creepy what brought me to this was actually something very innocent um, my girlfriend and I it was Halloween like right around Halloween and every year I watch Charlie Brown um, the Great Pumpkin so we're watching it and right at the end um, you know uh, there's a scene where like Snoopy fakes being the Great Pumpkin and his shadow pops up but that is not what I remember at the very very end after like Linus gives up the pumpkin a great pumpkin rises out of the pumpkin patch and you see this you know like jack-o-lantern head and so 
I was one of my favorite parts of the, the show. And I turned to Kate and I was like, wait, did they change the end of this? Is there like a second version of Charlie Brown that I don't know about? And she was had the same memory of this pumpkin popping up. So we get online and I'm like, well, maybe there's two versions. Maybe it was too anti-Christian back in the 60s, you know. And then <laughs> we search for like an hour and we can't find anyone talking about this pumpkin. And I, I just, I feel like I was going crazy. And then later on, I find on the internet that it's no longer Charles Schultz. Like with a T, it's just Charles Schultz. Like the creator of Peanuts name changed. The T just dropped out. And I was like, well, I'm not a very good speller. Maybe I just never noticed it or... You know, I just kind of kept making excuses for these things disappearing. And then I was searching around and I randomly kind of fell into the uh, Mandela Effect community. They have tons of videos on YouTube explaining that there is hundreds of things all of a sudden just gone or changed. And one of the ones that really jolted my reality was Eli Whitney. Now, Eli Whitney was the inventor of the cotton gin. But when I go and look on, you know, Wikipedia, he's like an old white guy from Yale that supposedly his connection is that some slave told him to do it, you know, gave him the idea, and then he went and invented a cotton gin that made life better for slaves. But that is not what I remember as a kid. What I remember was Eli Whitney being black. And it was a very big deal because there wasn't that many black inventors back then. And that he was a free black man who invented this to make slaves' life a little better. I remember this because I had a black teacher in elementary school that was huge on Black History Month. So every History Month, you know, Black History Month, we had to do a report. And guess who my report was on? Eli Whitney. We did like a group report about... Eli Whitney, and he doesn't look like <laughs> a, a, a bald old white guy from Yale to me. He was like, you know, pretty black looking. He looked like a slave. Um, and it was as clear as day to me. But it's got me <laughs> kind of freaked out. I mean, just if you don't believe it, here's a little proof. Like, look at, um, remember I was telling you Eli Whitney was in Black History Month? Well, Here's just a little bit I found. Like, there's this article here where they talk about all the black inventors that they're going to be talking about and teaching. And here's another page where it is um, talking about Black History Month, and Eli Whitney's listed on it. But the picture's like a white guy now. If you notice that this is an old page before I think the change happened. Um, so it's like all the writing's the same and they slapped a picture of a white guy on it. Why is he listed under Black History Month? I mean, are you really going to tell me, uh, well, I know we're supposed to be celebrating great black leaders, but we're going to throw a white guy in because he invented something that makes black people's lives a little easier back then. I mean, really? Black History Month? You're going to celebrate Eli Whitney? That just, it doesn't sound right. One of the Mandela effects that really tripped me out and made me realize something major is going on here is a picture of me actually changed. I went out for Halloween as uh, the OxyClean pitch guy, uh, Billy Mays. And I'm going to show you this picture right now. If you notice, I'm holding a can of OxyClean. My memory, that Oxy was spelled with a Y at the end. Take a good look. It's now an I. Do you guys remember that it used to have a Y originally? Now, normally you'd think, oh, okay, this is just like some sort of branding, rebranding change. But if you go on and look for the history of OxyClean, it's always been an I. It's never been like Y and then they changed it to I. Yeah, something major when your own picture changes. Freaked me out, honestly. Do you remember this? Bragg apple cider vinegar. I remember it as Bragg's. In fact, Kate said it changed overnight. She was using it one day, it was Bragg's, and then the next day it was Bragg. 
Does this sound familiar to you? Rags? Something else is missing here, too. We got these at Halloween, and... Kit Kat no longer has a hyphen. It used to be Kit hyphen Cat. Now it's just Kit Kat, like it's one word. Does that make sense? It's one word? Yeah, a lot of people are upset about the hyphen disappearing. One group who's really upset about this is the Christians. If you go on Reddit and look at the threads, some people are really freaking out because their family Bibles that they've had for like a hundred years have all of a sudden changed. And they read these Bibles every day. They know what's in them. And some pretty big verses are different. So all of a sudden, like the verse that we learned growing up on the Lord's Prayer, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. If you go look up what that verse is now, it's give us this day our daily bread and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. Debts and debtors? A lot of people from that other reality don't remember that. There's also a verse in Isaiah about the young lion shall lie down with the lamb. And that has changed to the wolf shall lie down with the lamb. What's crazy is there's all this residual stuff that didn't change. So there's all these little statuettes and there's actually full-blown statues of lions and lambs. And this one from the 1800s actually has the quote hand-painted on. Take a look at this. What's really upsetting a lot of people is they have a memory of the continents and the states and the countries looking different. Especially the world map seems to have changed. An easy place to see an example of what changed on the world map is to look at Australia. Australia used to be a lot more isolated down the water and now it's right next to Papua New Guinea. It's like a stone's throw away. That's kind of an easy example to see. Also, South America wasn't so far east. It was like under the US. Now it's way over a couple hundred miles. Kind of weird. Here's a better comparison of the world map. And you can really get a much better view of Australia before and after as well as South America before and after. And what's even crazier is a lot of people say that we jumped to a different part of the galaxy. That I remember when we were little kids in the 80s, like when Halley's Comet came, everybody was in the space. We had these little pictures that said, you are here. And it would point to the way out to the edge of the galaxy where now all the maps that NASA is showing is showing us kind of near the center of the galaxy. So what happened? We'll talk about that in a whole nother video, but that's, that's major to some people that lands changing around and we change location in the galaxy. Another thing that's got a lot of people rattled up is they have a memory of the human body being different, that the human body has now changed. And I remember it too. As a kid, women had an extra rib. There was this thing where, you know, Adam gave away one of his ribs to make Eve. And so when we learned our skeleton, women always had an extra rib and it made them look a little longer. These days, men and women have the same sets of ribs. When I went to chiropractic school, they have the same set of ribs. So I'm a doctor of the spine and I can tell you that the spine I learned as a kid is not what I learned as an adult something changed now this goes a lot more deep than just a few incidents I mean I could sit here and, and I'm gonna make a lot more videos about what's going on but this really shocked my reality because you know a lot of cultures think that we live in a projected reality like 
our consciousness dreams create this virtual world that we're just playing out and this goes way back to the oldest religious texts that none of what we actually live in is real well to wake up one day and major like tons and tons of little things have changed in your life um, it really kind of jolts you into realizing maybe that's right that we jumped realities or this reality we live in isn't is being screwed with that it's not real at all that it's like a program that someone can just change little details and, and you accept it if this um, effect if, if some of these things I'm saying kind of jolt you I want you to watch this playlist that I'm gonna include the Mandela playlist and uh, you're gonna see some serious <laughs> like before and afters and you might think it's crazy but watch it a little bit and then I want you to come back here and talk to me because I promise you we're gonna keep talking about this it is affecting my life it, it we stay up at night and talk about it and it all the little changes every day we find something new you know like um, the Schwanz catalog came the other day right do you remember Schwanz right this is like a food company that comes to your house look at it now notice something missing yeah, Schwann's used to have two ends at the end, right? Anyone else remember like ordering years of Schwann's? Um, yeah, that's wrong now. So we keep finding like all these little things that have changed daily, and it's trippy because sometimes they'll change, and then people will notice the change, and they change back to the way they used to be. What the hell is going on? So. I would love to know your theory and opinion on why this is happening. Again, I'm going to make a whole series of videos and this will just roll into that playlist when I'm done. One last thing I forgot to mention. Before you go, if you're new to my channel, please subscribe. Check it out. I'm going to be making a lot more Mandela videos as we go on. Also, I've got some pretty cool old videos too. You can also check out my website at 